live. Yeah. Well, hey. Hi. Not so tender podcast, episode number thirty seven. Mm-hmm. What a weird number. Mm-hmm. Three to the seven. On a blistery, hot, sunny day here in the Midwest. <laughs> Such a beautiful day. We go outside, it's so inspiring mm. for possible serial killing in London. It feels like London outside today. Yeah. We are not in London. Kelly, how was your week? Good. Week two of season three. Very busy. Super busy? Super Homecoming busy. week. Homecoming week over here. So momming has been busy. Did you go to homecoming? No. No. You know better than you even ask me. No. no I, I went not. like freshman, sophomore year. Like mm. when I was n- new to high school, I went and then that kind of faded. Once I had prom as a junior and senior, I didn't go to homecoming anymore. Did you go to it with your friends or a boy? Both. What well, mixed? Like sometimes very we progressive had, for the time. Kelly. We had we had at my school we had fall homecoming and then winter homecoming and prom and I was in choir so we had like a choir dance. I Jesus. there was like four opportunities so that's sometimes I went with friends sometimes I went with a boy usually a boy friend though. Your son just went to homecoming. He did. Did he have to do the whole fancy way of asking a lady? No. So I asked. He just paired up like a friend of his was going with this girl and then he just ended up going with one of her friends. And so I asked him, I was like, do we have to do the fancy? He was like, no. Making a poster? No. What's the I'm deal with that? that? Just one more thing that a guy has to do. It's so much anxiety on them to like come up with this thing. Can and I ask then, a question? Yeah, go ahead. As a man. Mm-hmm. Have you guys just gotten bored with what you have us do anyways? <laughs> Do you have to make new things for us as teenagers? <laughs> I was like, are you asking me as a man? Or no, I'm you just saying a general a question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, it, it gets kind of crazy. Like you have to have somebody film it. You have to have somebody it's like, a like an engagement. Like yes. a, yeah, like a proposal. Right, yeah. I feel sorry for young men who have to do proposals. Absolutely. You have to have a videographer, a lighting director, a, a whole, set. A whole thing. No, I think what probably happened is some young man crushed it. Being in a relationship and taking the being extra clever. initiative, yes, and trying this, and then that kind of set the standard. Oh, and now it's gone a little extreme. Where my son, who is not dating anybody but yet has a female date, he's not going to go to that. No, he was like, I'm not making a poster, no, no a cookie, baking a cake. No, mom, I'm so not let me get this right. <laughs> so, because somebody saw something on film and was like, I expect that now, yes, so. Could young men do the same thing with adult uh, films? Women? <laughs> with adult women? <laughs> hey, I saw this movie this one time where she cooks dinner all the time. Right. You should do that school. now. Right, yeah. Does my homework. Right. <laughs> no. uh, so that seems a little bit... Um, it is. It is a beautiful thing, though, if you're enjoying it's, it. It yeah, seems very high stress. But it just sets you up for a wedding. they want to. Like, but it sets you up for a wedding. Just a bunch yeah, of hoopla for nothing. No, no, that's right? true. I mean, honestly, that's the standard from a very young age. Hey, let's go to a place we don't really want to be so we can leave and go somewhere we want to go and eat fucking garbage food. That's true. Fact. (laughs) Yes, I've never had anybody say it like that. I mean. We'll invite all of our friends and family to this big fancy dinner and then two hours later go to a bar. Yeah, 100 percent. Or act like this is a bar. Yeah. Act like this shitty barn is a bar. Uh Uh-huh. Act like this pole barn with a concrete floor. Yeah. Is a bar. I get it. We're just showing off. Just new boot goofing. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah. So my, your... my kids have been kidding. Yeah. My clients are clienting. They're kidding, too. They're kidding, too. I've been swamped. Just every single available appointment I have is filled. I had a, a client come in yesterday, a new client. And he's Puerto Rican. Mm-hmm. And really nice young man raises his eight-year-old son by himself since he was eight months old okay like Doing yeah it. yeah yeah and you could tell like he's just like i just love my son so much you know horrible accent but uh i watched a lot of i love lucy <laughs> <laughs> it's ricky ricardo it's, every accent is ricky ricardo even if you're <laughs> southern <laughs> russian jamaican it doesn't russian, matter Sopranos. english right. it doesn't matter ricky ricardo and uh he says, how come you don't post more stuff? I was like, I I don't care. 
He's like, you have a show. I was like, yeah. He's like, what is this? Like, <laughs> and then he goes, what do you think the biggest problem in relationships are? I was like, oh, shit. I'm glad uh, I'm going to be tattooing you for three hours. Like, we can get we got, into we it. We got a minute. Yeah, it was interesting, for sure. But his love for his child was really, really cool. And his perception of his mother and his grandmother mm. was really mm -hmm. cool. And mm -hmm. how he respects them. He says his stepdad is really cool. He's like, he loves my mama, you know, and my mama loves him. He works second shift and she stays up till he gets home and, and dinner and like even late, you know, yeah, second yeah, shift. And right. they enjoy, he goes, they talk and they laugh. And I thought that was super sweet. I found that very interesting. Mm. For sure. Um, holidays are coming. <laughs> Can you feel it? Uh -huh. Are they starting to dip their toes oh, into yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. So many people either couples the couple dynamic with in-laws or soon-to-be's or whatever that yeah. role comes up a lot with individuals on my caseload that have significant others even though i'm only seeing one half of that yeah it comes up couples that's all we're talking about right now already oh yeah it's not even october no so it comes up because a lot of them just summer is ending yeah. So they just went on vacation with their in-laws or they were supposed to or there was drama on Labor Day, Memorial Day, 4th of July. Like something has happened and there's usually one of the two, if not both, are like, hey, we need to talk about this before before and, November. And the other one's like. It's fine. This is how they always are. That's what it is. It's always somebody has an issue and the other one is practicing like radical acceptance, right? That it just. Well, it's been their family. It is. I mean, you're not changing is. your dad yeah, or your mama, like, right? Right. They're assholes or yeah. they're sweethearts, but they mean well. And Don't like, let them yeah, drink. Right. right. We'll head out early. That's hard. Mm -hmm. It's really hard. Um, I had a client and we were talking about what we were talking about on the show last week about people not wanting people to come when you're at your house unannounced or come, mm -hmm. you know, all this stuff. And she was talking about her parents and I know her parents. So this is the craziest dynamic of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Like I've watched these kids grow up mm -hmm. and talking about his parents and you know, both, both the kids are starting to put on some decent boundaries because they're trying to stop some generational shit. Good. And, but it's not easy because no. they, you know, no, because they, they don't understand. No. And, it was funny because she's going to get married and they were talking and she was talking about it and she was like, yeah, my, my fiance says, you know, I don't want your parents coming over unless I know they're coming over because I need to prepare for it. And I started looking at her and I go, prepare for what? And, and she goes, well, I mean, they shouldn't just drop over. I said, do you go to their house? She goes, yeah. I go, do you go to your house, their house with him? And she goes, yeah. I go, so I live in Yin Yang. It has to exist on both sides or it's not real in the right. universe. It's, it's fact. It's it's not real. If it only exists on one side, it is not real or it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. Theory. So, okay. that lens. Go ahead. So, I go, you can go to their house. I go, if they ever came in your house and, like, pissed on your couch or, like, lit something <laughs> on fire or, like, acted like, a, like, tore up your fucking... And they go, well, no. And I go... So, make me understand. I'm trying to understand right. Help this. Help me. Right, yeah. Because how is that fair? You can go to their home because mm. you can leave. Well, you can also go ask them to leave. That's fair. You know what I mean? Yeah. And she just went like this. That's interesting. I said, Did, have they ever done anything bad at your house? Mm. Usually people are on best, better behavior when they're not comfortable in their own home. Yeah. Because I'm going to be a lot more brazen in my home than I right. would be in yours. Yeah. I mean, I, I would just leave your house. Sure. But I'm not telling you to fucking kick rocks and you can knock that shit off right. in your own home right so it's almost it would be safer to kind of host yeah yeah that's fair so i see this a lot where usually by the time it comes up in session they're not going to their in-laws either like there's there is a mm -hmm. cultural relational dynamic right that has gotten super prickly everybody's aware of it. Nobody wants to talk about it. And usually the person who is bringing it up does want to talk about it. Yeah. They want to work they, through it. They want to work through it. They don't want super rigid boundaries where we don't see your parents. That's not their Because they probably have decent parents. 
Yeah. Or they have horrible parents and they wish they, that they want, could have that. Right. And so that's something that we talk about a lot in yeah. session is nobody, I have yet, I guess I should say, to come into contact with an individual who wasn't hopeful about the parents they were inheriting. Like they were excited about the opportunity to gain an additional yeah. support system. Nobody goes into marriage being like, I don't want any more in-laws. I don't want another family. I just want you. I don't, I just want you. And only, like, that's just not, it's not fun. It doesn't talk. It doesn't happen a lot. So I don't assume if they're in therapy, they're not that close to off or rigid about. Certain no, things. no, they're usually pretty open. Usually it comes up where the in-laws come to their house and do break boundaries, whether it's, as we've talked about, like critiquing or like offering help, even if it's genuinely just an offer, somebody gets offended or yeah, they make a comment about like, oh, the lasagna is a little dry. Did you use, you know, like just making conversations, but people are like, that's rude. Don't. Is it rude? If they, if they have the information to make it better. If I if the table was wobbly and I grab something to put something under the leg to make it not wobble while I'm sitting there eating, am I being rude because I'm I'm putting down your table? Some people might feel that yeah, way. Yeah, maybe. And I feel like it. If they're like this, slamming it off the table, it's like, what is this slop you have presented <laughs> to me? All right. That I mean, are we a little too yeah, sensitive about well, that kind of stuff? I think the I'm parent asking. the parent child relationship is so delicate. The reason I'm open to my mother's feedback and could just kick it back to her is because I've known her for 38 years. Right. My mother-in-law I've known for four. So for her to come in and, and offer assistance feels unwarranted or like, I don't know you, you know, like there's, but, but why would you treat it any different? If, if you step back and really look at it, why mm -hmm. would you talk to her any differently than you'd speak to your own mother? Because you know, her better. Well, I'm going to assume you're speaking to your well, mother in a kind way, even if oh, you're, even if you're hitting it yeah. back to her. She, right. you're, just, you're just going, hey, we don't, what, what are you doing? Stop it. Okay. Eat it or don't. And I'll, <laughs> like, or bring your own food. Right, yeah, pick I up mean, Subway on your way home if you don't I like have it. never been picky about food when I'm going to someone else's house. Not sure, to be an asshole. Sure. If I'm showing up at your house, I'm so thankful that you're cooking for me. Well, absolutely. And, and if I, I guess, don't like it, guess what? I'll push you around my plate and go, yeah, I don't like it. Right. That's okay. Well, one, I don't care. I can stop it. Usually, Taco if Bell somebody comes home. to my house and they're not eating, I will usually ask if you don't like Is it. Okay? Does it need something like yeah. we have salt, pepper, garlic, whatever, ketchup? Other food. Ketchup makes everything better. <laughs> Other <laughs> like, food. Right, yeah. Seriously. Do you want pizza rolls? I can make some pizza rolls. Why but, do we think it's so like life? Like we're doing the Olympics. Like there's four uh, people yeah. sitting in front of you with scorecards. Right. I mean, honestly. No, that's fair. And I think my mom on a rare occasion would pop over unannounced just because it is, I was raised that that's rude. Like you at least give somebody a heads up or ch text them or check in or something. I've been asking that question a lot. Why, why it's such a big deal for people. Mm. What you do know? people say? They're unprepared. I guarantee. Well, it, they can't even give me a real answer. I said, how can you be so upset about something you can't give me a real answer about? Oh, well, maybe I'm just unprepared. I don't... <laughs> if I, I'm in the middle of cooking and my kitchen is a disaster, I'm folding clothes. Who what? cares? They'll help you. If somebody loves you, they'll help you or they won't mind it. Yeah. If they're coming to see you, it's usually not to persecute you. Yeah, that's fair. I'm sorry. It's just not. And if they yeah. do, go, hey, why do you want to come over here and be a dick? Like, why are you drove over here to be a dick? You could just call me. Send me a text. <laughs> Email. <laughs> I mean, honestly, singing Telegram. You don't even like. If, I can imagine that if yeah. you're that un unhappy with what the way I do things, why did you drive? Like, I I have a hard time believing people are that malicious. Are they? They can be. And I also know that I carry yeah. myself in a way that most people would never yeah. talk to me that way. Yeah. Okay. So I have to take that with a grain of salt too. So I understand that. But if you really feel like these, you're allowed to look at them and go, hey. Is this what we're going to do forever? Because I just need to understand. Is this just your thing? I've had that conversation you know, with my mother-in-law. If and you're just we, cranky. Yeah. We're better now. Okay. Because I was you, like, hey, I don't like how this is going to you. And she was like, no. And I was like, okay, then let's fix it. Yeah, we can be buddies. Because I don't want to. Yeah. And I, I, I understand that people have a hard time stepping up to their it's own hard. parent. Yeah. But if it's not your parent, like, I guess some people have a hard time talking to people like that oh yeah communication you don't have to be skills rude. are hard you don't have to be yeah. mean but if somebody's coming into your home and being cranky every time just pull them aside and go are you okay 
Because, like, what's going on here? Is this what we do? Because, like, is my house making you uncomfortable? Because me, personally, I would try to make it better because... Well, sure. I'd want you to be more comfortable. Well, I guess that would be my thing is if... if we have five children and a bunch of pets. So like my house is it's a lot. lot. Yeah. So if you just walk into my house, you might catch it on a chaotic moment. It's not for everybody. But Kelly, we're used to it. But I, that's the conversation I had. If you're just going to pop in, I can't be held responsible for your stress level when you walk into my house and unannounced. Can I ask right a question? Hmm. Why do people think that people that are way older than you, 20 to 30 years to 40 years older mm -hmm. than you, can't handle anything? Do you think that they were just safely set into this world at 65 and have never experienced anyone telling them to shut the fuck up or be quiet or you're in my house? Well, Thomas, they complain. And like this is personal experiences, but this is a lot of clinical experience is people come to your home where you have multiple children, multiple pets in between things. Right. And they're like. This, this seems lot. like a bad time. This is a lot. This is loud. Or like, where do you want me to sit? Or like, your dogs keep jumping on me. Like, they they physically or verbally right. express discontent, right? Right. So now, especially if unannounced, I'm dropping what I'm doing to cater to your needs, and that was not on my agenda. That, I think, is valid. That's different. Yeah. That's different, because if somebody isn't making themselves useful, when I asked that older lady that was in her, like, I think she was almost 70. Mm-hmm. She might have been in her 70s. And I asked her, when did that stop? She goes, if I was painting, people would just stop and help me. They would, if they stop over, mm -hmm. they would just go, you need some help? I'm putting clothes away. They're like, let me fold these. They that's would just. Not, that's not normal. It was in my house because if my mm -hmm. aunt stopped by or my mm -hmm. grandma stopped by, mm -hmm. that's just what they did. That's not what So most that's probably do. why I felt. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's what we would no, do. No, that's not what most people Like if do. I showed up at your house and you were doing something or you had something pulled apart, I'd just be there like helping you doing it. Right. Or I'd well, just be sitting there drinking coffee. To you, I would be like, so you can either help me or you can have a seat and talk to me, but I got to keep, no, and I keep understand, moving. I understand that because I was raised that right. way. Right, yeah. Other so, people are not that way. But maybe just take a moment. Yeah. And don't get freaked out about it. But I've noticed that people are so, and it, it has to be a control thing. It has to be a power thing. Mm -hmm. That people control. are like, I don't want you there. I shouldn't have to do this or I shouldn't have to. And I'm like, why? It, I think it's a combination of lack of control because you didn't have any say in them coming and fear of judgment. The, it's that like caught off guard of like, well, if I knew you were coming, I could have done whatever it is. But now you're yeah, just here I love now. That. As right. humans, we want to control everything that we shouldn't worry about. And then mm -hmm. the things we actually control, we kind of blow off. Or we screw up. You know what the I mean? That we had like the things you should probably that, worry right? about, you no, could probably uh -uh. make your life a little bit easier. Right. You, but th the fact that somebody shows up for your kids thing and you're like, they didn't say they were coming. It's like, you'd be pissed that they didn't go. So right. you can't yeah. make some people right. happy, yeah. right? Absolutely. But communicate with them, especially if they're not your parents. Because guess what? They're not going to write you out of the will. No. And so many times I'm like, guys, it, we have to address this. And it often is something that doesn't need addressed right now. And that's why people kind of kick it downfield is they're like, well, I don't, I'm not going to see them again until Thanksgiving. Well, that's too late. I'm not going to see them until Christmas. No, and I'm talk like, to them before. Yeah, but it's October. But you should talk to them when it's not so we should elevated. Probably, right. We you should know. probably address it. And that's why in some cases I'm bringing it up now. Yeah, because I'm like, go, we still have two months. It is weird if you approach somebody and say, "Hey, am I doing something that's upsetting you?" Because when you come over, like, you seem like you're in a bad mood. Is it there too much? Like, just if yeah. you come at it with a point, like, is there something I'm? I some people go, I shouldn't have to say it like that. I'm like, well, then, oh, then don't no. let them in your house and don't go to their yeah. house. Guess what? There's certain things I don't do, and I'm not going to do. Right. I'm unapologetic about it. I don't right. care. But I'm not sitting there acting like a victim. Like, I can't believe I have to. You don't have, you're, you're grown. No. And I had the opposite where my mother-in-law was asking my husband if something was off. And then he was asking me and me. I was like, oh, let's just nip that now. I'll just call her. And he was like, right. Don't call her. Well, I was I like, why? Her. Why not? She's a grown woman. Right. She's grown. I'm grown. And you're not going to be mean. I can answer. No. I'm not going to be mean. And like, even no. if you are going to be mean, pull that fucking bandaid off. Uh, right. Get I'd it going. I'd rather just have the conversation. He was like, no, hey, I wanted to talk to you. And then I would talk to her. And I was like, oh, that's asinine to me. Yeah. Like, I don't understand that at all. That won't get lost. In I rather, right. I'd much rather just have the, 
slightly uncomfortable conversation. Speaking of slightly uncomfortable situations and mm-hmm. conversations, we're going to talk about our subject today. Oh, no. Burr, it's burr, very burr. uncomfortable. Guys, be prepared. I don't know why I anticipate that you're going to be elevated about this. Maybe you're not. No, I'm trying to understand it. And my idea of it is a little different. So today we're going to talk about overlapping and overlapping in relationships and how we don't talk about it much. We try to brush it under the rug as much as possible. Very much. Or we try to hate the person before so much that we'll move on quicker, which Mm -hmm. was never the case. It's actually worse because I think being hateful about somebody are stronger feelings than actually just loving and accepting them. Yeah, that's fair. (laughs) Right? That's fair. Okay. You have to put a lot of effort into hating somebody, I feel like. Well, it, it is. Yeah. It's it's not, it's it's to me more intense than love. Because mm-hmm. love is peaceful. Yeah. Should be easy. It kind of is. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're not just. If you're not, if you're not a jerk. Well, <laughs> if you're honest a about more it. Natural. If you're truly honest about it. No, it, I've never naturally hated somebody. Oh, I have. I have not. You've never played in a band. No, I have naturally loved people and I've naturally disliked people. Like they're just yeah. not my people. I'm joking. I don't naturally but yeah. hate somebody. Unless naturally you're like just like organically person. hating somebody is not. A no, unless you're like a, you know, raper, or, you know, creeper, you know what I mean? Like that. I'm like, all right, I hate that person. Right. All right. Overlappers. Overlapping. Let's hear about it. So we'll start with the definition. Because this is go. something that you sent to me. So an overlapper, which might seem obvious, but I did look just to make sure that. Oh, it was it's not as I simple thought, as what you right. think. So it is by definition, a person who has not yet ended their current relationship, but starts engaging with a new person. Bring That's that back burner to the front burner. New person, old person, some, but there's, there's engagement on more than one front, right? Yeah. I'm not out of this relationship, but I'm going to entertain or pursue or engage, right? Like there's some sort of secondary relationship, which we've talked a lot about infidelity. So the way that you engage and the level of the relationship could vary. Yeah. But it is what it is. If you're an overlapper, you know it. Like that there's. You're throwing rocks at somebody's. Absolutely. Or letting them throw them in. Sure. (laughs) Batting your eyes when they throw rocks (laughs) your way, right? Oh my God. Did you drop that rock? (laughs) How'd that get in here? Here, I'll give it for you. How'd that I'll get, get in my you. pants? Right. So we went ahead and t- <laughs> I made it a document. So I have reasons for overlapping. Yeah. <laughs> Red flags for the people that are engaging in these overlappers, because I think that's something that comes up a lot in my caseload. Really? Overlapping comes up a lot in my caseload. But it's never defined as overlapping, is it? No. No. Look at us. But I have people who are dating and start to see red flags of a person who is overlapping. So I added that, too, of how to catch it. I had a kid. He's been out of a relationship (laughs) for three. (laughs) This young man. I had a guy at a gig last night call me son. And and I'm like, you graduated in 84, son. (laughs) Okay, you're old enough to be my fucking brother, not my dad. Okay, let's just simmer down. Didn't feel disrespectful. Re- I was not happy. He called me son. I was like, just because I have a young face, don't make me young. Old Sir. enough to whoop your ass. Oh man, and it was in the bathroom too. Don't talk to me when you're at a urinal, bud. When they're all whipped out and you're calling me son. eyes on your piece, son. Back that would off. Be an extra level, anyway. So I had a young man and he uh, just got out of a relationship that he's been in. He has a uh, two-year-old son and he's been out of a relationship for three months and he's already dating a girl. He's got like a couple kids and she just got out of a relationship for like three months. I was like, every time, what every time? time? What this are you is guys some doing? chaos like, going what are on we doing? here. Right. Like, like they, she's got a baby Oh, like in a carrier. Oh, and I was like, like under six months, not like a year okay. still like what? That's some overlap. That's some deep overlap. That might not be overlap. So if, so by definition, and that's why like I have other things that are unhealthy alternatives to overlapping. So overlapping is like, I have yet to end my relationship and it might be tapering off. I might be breadcrumbing them. I might be like already engaged in something else. So listen to this. 
So she might have, they might have both might have ended both and maybe they're yes, rebounding. 100%. That's an unhealthy alternative. <laughs> so here's what's funny. I'm so proud of him, honestly, because he's dating this new girl. Her dude comes to pick up the baby at his house, mm -hmm. which is crazy to me, okay? She went out there, and he had a girl in his truck, okay? And she got all pissed and was like, brought the baby back in and was like, no, you didn't tell me you were bringing her, blah, 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 blah. And after it calmed down and he left, he said as a young man, he says, I'm going to tell you, I think that was extremely wrong. For, for, for him her to, to bring her no, or for, for her, her to not give it up? For yeah, her not right. to give the he, baby. He, right goes, he came over here to get his daughter and have that baby. And it shouldn't matter. He goes, he's picking his daughter up at a new guy's house. Are you so what? And you could tell she was right. like, uh, uh, uh. And he goes, well, how, why are you feeling this way? Right. What's like, happening? He goes, I'm right. telling you right now, that's that was wrong. Right. And I, I was like, oh, so his, let me clarify, his new girlfriend wouldn't give up her children to her ex. Yeah. The uh, baby. Because he had a girl in the truck. Oh. I would have looked at him and been like, are you, uh, you know, you I'm at your, give that baby. I'm at your new dude's house. Right. Well, you should have told, I don't need to tell you who's in my car. It, it doesn't matter. All right. None of your business. None of your business. Right. I came to get my kids from wherever you told me to. But how good of that young man to just say it? Absolutely. To her. Yeah. To and be he like, said hey, in a kind this way. seems. He said it in a nice Seems way, icky, in a kind way. He right. goes, it's not okay. He goes, I've had my kid held above my head. Right. That's not okay. Right. Because most guys don't even come and pick up their kids or no. girls don't pick up their kids. Let alone from, oh my gosh. Right. From some new guys. Could you imagine? Here's a pen. Just drop, drop a pen and be like, come get no, no. Just drop them off at the post office. <laughs> right. right. I'll meet you somewhere. I, I see some couples because I stop at the same gas station all the time. I always see these couples doing Passing the, off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The book bags. Mm hmm I was like, what, what are you guys doing? So we have the definition, reasons for it, alternative verbiage. And don't get this confused with overslapping, okay? Because it's a different <laughs> kind of person. <laughs> they get a little excited. Right. And then how to help, what to do instead of overlapping, because it can be hard. Because it's on you. Mm -hmm. It really it, is. There's on literally you. no. No one else would like nothing, Nobody else held responsible. This is all you, for boo. This, right? this is all you. All right. So definition overlapping. Let's go over it again. Engaging in a new relationship or entertaining, I would even say, a new relationship yes. before you have actually ended it. <laughs> Justin wants us to repeat it again for the people in the back. Entertaining a new romantic interest. In any way. In any way. And if you want more definitions, go back to the other videos because we've yeah. talked about infidelity. A physical relationship, an emotional relationship. If you're getting your needs met by somebody else... Before you're done with before the Before you've tied up those loose ends, that is overlapping. Yes. Uh-oh. <laughs> you can <to> wait. <laughs> They're just so Justin and Mike are talking about if you're getting a lap dance. So that's a little different. <laughs> I know what you guys are alluding to. Totally different. That's business. And you don't really have a relationship. Oh, lap, la overlap overlapping. dancing. Overlapping. Okay. Dancing. Which over could their be overslapping. <laughs> Overclapping <laughs> of the booties. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. So, overlapping. All right. So, overlapping. So, there's lots of reasons why people do it. And I am assuming you hear a lot of clients oh. who accidentally tell you that they're overlapping. It's all the time. Yeah. All the time. In my personal life, I've, I mean, I have not always been. I have been. I have overlapped before. How could you not? Right. I still have friends and family who tend to like tell me about a story and I just give them that look. And then they realize that they told the therapist sister. Right. That like. Knows. That I had you're a, not. Right. That you're not being very like, healthy. You know you're right? Like, to? Right. So I had a boy the other day talking about his girl. They got into a fight. I said, what's the last thing you guys got an argument about? He goes, my phone, my Snapchat. And I was like, well, does she not want you to have Snapchat? She goes, she don't like who I talk to on there. I go, then get rid of it. And he looked at me. And he goes, you know, I keep Snap streaks with people. I go, you know, that's not a real fucking thing. Is that girl, would she come let your dog out? I mean, honestly, if your yes. mama needed something, would she run it over is to her? Is she a 3 a.m. type of friend? Well, I'm saying, like, what? what is it? Right. And he looked at me and I said, then 
quit Listen, it. I've been on Snapchat. I've been off Snapchat. But I'm going to tell you right now, if I'm in a serious relationship, it's gone. Because there's no reason for it, honestly. It's just more of just killing time. And, like, yeah, I see my right. daughter's stuff on there a lot, so that's where it sure. sucks me back in. But I will say this. I could see where people, especially him, you know what I mean? Because he's young, and they're just really mm-hmm. engaging in a lot of bad stuff. But I was like, dude, do you, is she your real girl or not your real girl? And he just, and he looked at me, and I said. <laughs> oh, you're just asking all the questions. Well, I was like, what? Well, then, then set her free. Yes, if you're not interested in prioritizing her other over, I said if you can't do that simple of a thing, do you think you're going to do some major right. shit for her? And that's your girl, right? Yeah, I mean, I was just being honest. Like, yeah. and he just looked at me. I was like, because you're doing shit on there. I go, how uncomfortable would you be if she was in your phone? <laughs> yeah, he made that face. That's what I ask people all the time. Right? Oh, are you engaging in conversations that they could be? Now listen, looped into now there are conversations like, no. you're going to have with your best friend that you know no, you're venting towards yes. that's different but are you yes. talking to people that you could possibly or there's a chance that you would be romantically engaged with sure them? well there's a big that's, difference if yes. andrew met, if andrew read my conversation with gina he might get his feelings hurt because she's my person that i vent to but if right? he read the conversation with you and i he's not going to be no, you know what i, I mean don't care. and we right. share some well, stuff too absolutely. but in the same breath it's not inappropriate no and you might get your feelings hurt just because you read the uncut Shit. version. You not get your feelings hurt just by talking to us <laughs> right. in person. Right. You know what I'm upset about. They just got the unfiltered version and you got the filtered version because I love you and I don't <laughs> want to hurt your feelings. They got the thought out version. <laughs> right. They got the vented version. You got the filtered version. So that overlap there. It's like, dude, you, these aren't real people. And it, here's the thing, too. I do think because some people just chalk it up like you're a shitty person. I honestly mm, also mm, believe mm. that you, if you're a people pleaser, yeah, you cannot have social media unwild or at least unbridled like that. It's just because you will feel bad about not answering their message. Sure. Okay. Setting boundaries is hard. Yeah. I go, listen, I stopped answering people and I don't care. I'm not being mean. Like if you message yeah, me, sure, like if somebody right. that goes, hey, Thomas, I'm going through some stuff. I got a question or blah, blah, blah. I'd be like, right. what's up? absolutely but if you're just throwing rocks in my window and i've learned that you know like that is not okay but i used to be a people pleaser i figured it out on the show you were talking to one of our guests and in real time i was like holy shit Mm. that's what i'm doing Mm -hmm. because it wasn't important for me to really talk to them but it just felt like if i didn't answer their message even as mundane Mm -hmm. as it was Mm -hmm. it was me being disrespectful to them it was me right and now i'm like this this isn't real because what do they matter? They probably don't know my first name. No. I mean, honestly. Right, yeah, right. We've never, my rule is if we've never broken bread together, sorry. I don't owe you anything. It, right? yeah. I don't have any obligation to you. So when I asked him about that, you could just tell he was like, oh, mm-hmm. shit. And I was right. like, Dude, You're messing around. Oh, how gonna, would you feel? Would you be okay with it? You're screw it up. But if you're going to screw it up, just let her go now. Set her and free. And go be free. So this comes up a lot in overlappers. And one of the reasons is a fear of commitment, right? It's starting to get more serious and they don't want it to get more serious. So they start entertaining something else that's more casual. Do you think people really struggle because they think that I don't want to settle? There's might be something better out there. Oh, all the time. The grass is greener mentality all the time. too. I mean, I understand. All the time. Me and Mike were talking before you got here, and he was talking about dating. He read something because Mike's older, and he was looking at older dating. Like, he's trying to understand it. And he said, the one person wrote, you need to set your standards lower. And, like, you should not. And he's like, why in the fuck would I go? Dude, you're fine. Like, dude, you're debt-free. You own everything. You literally own everything. You have you have money to live the rest of your life comfortably, to travel and all that. Right. This is when you're going to be like, you know what? I'm going to invite the, the shittiest person <laughs> into my life when I have Anybody the most the- to lose. <laughs> when I literally have the most to lose. No! That's when I'm going to do it. Mike, hold your standards. Oh, no shit. And he, and, but he was realistic. He goes, well, if I'm not happy, I'm not going to make them happy, and then they're going to be miserable. Yeah. So if anybody wants to get at uh, bigmike.com, um, backslash <laughs> closet lover. <laughs> closet lover. No, so there's definitely so some of the reasons. And I guess me let too. me other unhealthy alternatives are ghosting. We've talked about that a lot. Yeah. Rebounding. Yeah. Talked about that a lot. So Unless that's more Robin. like what you were saying is they obviously have ended or had a difficult conversation, but now they're 
in a new relationship really soon. And I don't, if you've ended it, you've ended it. Because I've yeah. had people, there was a girl that got mad. Did I talk about this last week? That her friends embarrassed her by reaching out to the new girl? No. Oh, I'm God. Hearing that story. That sounds awful. Tell me more. <laughs> so she's, she dated this guy through high school, high school sweethearts. They broke up. Well, they've been broke up. Well, one of her friends decided to creep and figured out that he's dating someone. Mm -hmm. Well, she took it on herself to follow this girl's social media, write her a letter, and she's like, they've only been broke up for a month. You're a piece of shit. They broke. I go, I don't care if I hung with the phone with you. I'm broke up with you. Right. If I said, I don't want to do this anymore. We're done. Click. Our contract's over. Right, yeah. Okay. I'm allowed to do whatever I what, want. What, how weird is that with overlapping? So you're not, like, that's a weird, yeah. like, we're broke up. Right. Why are you holding on? Right. And Which, she was so it, embarrassed. It could be hurtful for you to move on. If, if we have a conversation and you end it and then you move on, I would second guess you. I would be curious if you Why? were overlapping. I, I understand. But you're yeah. curious anyways. If you broke up, there's many reasons. You don't need more. I don't need any Not of to it. be a dick. I don't give a shit. Get on <laughs> with it. I don't care. And mind your business. She was upset. I believe it. Because she was like, you made me look like a fool. Yeah. Oh, you were no, sticking up mad. for her. She goes, I didn't I need be to be stuck up for No. He she doesn't goes, How? owe me anything. And she goes, am I allowed to date? So you encourage me to date. Because I asked Every her. Every weekend. <laughs> I go, do they encourage you? They go, yeah. I go, what fucking parallel universe is this? All right. So that's that's not overlapping. You're broke up. No. So yeah. So we have ghosting, rebounding, benching. Ooh, let's hear about that. Benching is when you, like you said, when you are just like rotating pots, right? Mm. Where you don't really want to break up with this person in case there's nothing else better out there. So you kind of bench them just in case and distance yourself, but keep Let's them try a couple with, like, new right, players. Yeah, let me just see if this works out better or you bring somebody else into the equation, but you kind of breadcrumb them in case this starts to go bad. I've Benching is so definitely busy. a version of overlap, but there's like priority differences, yeah. right? So those are other things to keep in mind. We're kind of going to talk about all of them. But yeah, so reasons for overlapping, fear of commitment. We talked about that, yeah. right? Where things are starting to get serious. She's hinting at like a ring or at moving in together. My lease is ending in two months. Yeah, we spend every day together. Are we going to move in together or no? Yeah. Like, right, so fear of commitment. Sometimes people will back out and start engaging with something new to keep it light. <laughs> fear of loneliness or boredom. I honestly think that most of this is like out of boredom. You think? Simulation. Well, the next one is <laughs> love or the spark addiction. It's getting, it's simmering too much. Do you, do you know how many people will send all this beautiful, oh my God, you're so fucking amazing, blah, blah, blah. You've never had lunch with me. <laughs> like you've never, like how in the fuck could you say something about me you don't know? I know. It happens all the time on my caseload. People are like, love bombing though is real. So my favorite thing is head you, over heels. You, you can't don't love or hate them. somebody unless you truly know them. Right. And that's what they all Anyone. Do. A lot of my people on my caseload are like, you don't know me. Stop telling me that you love me. I actually respect you less. Ew. If you start to tell me that you love me and you don't even know, my, like you've never spent the night at my house. You've never met my parents. You've never seen what I sleep in. You know, like you don't know anything about me. You know, the version of me that I'm showing you. Right. Listen, that young man with the kids and all uh -huh. that stuff, we were talking and I pulled the old, the old Thomas question. Mm -hmm. What's her middle name? He didn't know. Fuck. No, uh, I uh, said uh, you uh, could uh, possibly uh. be shot by her ex, her kid's dad. Yes. Okay. He's the showing reality. up at your house. Not uh -huh. like at first it was not good. Right. Okay. Right. For a woman, you don't know her middle name. And he looked at me and he was like, oh, I go tighten it up. <laughs> Come on. You're bringing a woman around your kids. You don't know her middle name for what? Get the fuck out of here. She doesn't need to meet your kids for you to hook up. What the? F he was you. The look on his face was like, oh, don't. Oh, he sounds like a cute little kid. He's no, he's <laughs> actually younger. a well spot. He loves his mama. He loves his grandma. Yeah. Like he, he's you just, just tell. Up. Yes. Up. Yes. That is. Hmm. So that's it. So the lover spark addiction is another one. That's kind of that grass is always greener, right? Of oh, like, you're going to take the attention There has from to anyone. be something. Yeah, until they get to know you. Right. And then it fades also. 
Everybody's obsessed there's with that. Stages Not of a relationship. Being obsessed with the spark that it needs. We've lost our spark. Yeah. Every couple on my case lot. I just want the spark back. All right, get a and side I piece. To, I have to tell them. I'm like, <laughs> that's not a thing. What do they say? That they're sad. It just bursts their bubbles. Do they believe bubbles. you? Yeah. Because some people are like, no, she's just crazy. Yeah, no. But no, because I articulate it better than that. I lead with, for dramatic effect, that that's not a thing. And then they're sad. And then I right. give them a beat. And then I'm like, but <laughs> we can get to the other side of this awkward stage where you have deeper appreciation for your partner. And you can get some of that butterfly-ish type of fit. Like, if you really are in love with your partner, it doesn't have to be dipped in glitter. I'm going to say It can be this. much deeper than that. The deepest feelings I've ever felt was someone who truly accepted me for me. Not, not, the, could not the craziness. Mm -hmm. Not the like, oh my God, you're so amazing. Oh my God, I'm going to do this and we're going to do this and we're going to do it. No. Sitting next to each other in my Bronco comfortable with somebody who has me in their you know, best interest but truly is willing to sit and work through me mm -hmm. and i'm willing to work through them in a polite healthy right. compassionate way i can finally speak freely mm -hmm. i've never been able to do that yeah that's new for me too speaking freely being weird ever, make it like just ever Andrew laughs at me all of the time and it just I would say we're five years in and I would say in the last like month I have found myself I note it as being weirder right because like yeah. I'm just in the kitchen making noise or singing or whatever and he just walks by and giggles right and I've started realizing like oh I have no filter left I'm never like yeah putting on I mean I'm not pooping with the door open no <laughs> no I'm not happening. still not farting <clears throat> right but, but that but to me is the spark. The, That's better than singing in the shower and not the sparks fun. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Sure. But like, it's right. But it's new guitar versus yeah. that guitar you grab and just feels like home. Right. And you know what it is. Mm -hmm. And it's got some boot bumps and some scratches. Mm -hmm. But man, it stays in tune. Mm -hmm. It's easy to get back in tune. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, the next one is guilt. Whoa, what's up with that? So it's the opposite of what I thought it would be. But the reason people overlap is because the reason that they want to leave isn't good enough. It's it because it's just because they're not happy. It's just because there is no spark, right? Like they, they beat themselves up for wanting to leave. But if they find a person who's a better fit, that, that like that justifies. Yeah. Of like, Nobody I'm wants not a crazy. new car right. until if their car is running decent. Right. It has to be very inspiring. Yes. Right. So they kind of start to waver that they're like, am I crazy? Is this just what it is? And then they find somebody and they entertain it and then they see and then they kind of use that as justification of like, I knew something was missing. Do you think most overlaps come from somebody sharing what's wrong with their relationship? Oh, yes. If you're not happy, stop telling people you're not happy. Only makes things worse. That's like, absolutely is that the biggest green light in the world? I had lunch today and we were talking about that. And my friend was talking about this girl that was sharing to him about how unhappy she was. And we told him like she wants to sleep with you. She, <laughs> that's but that's what that is. If she's complaining about her partner, is that to fact? you? Yes. Yeah. Jeez. I mean, we could be ballsy enough to say, yeah, she wants to sleep with you. She wants to entertain the, your... The your... least side of that spectrum is she's looking for something from you. Right. Because... No. Don't do that. Stop. Stop. And if not, she would say, I'm super happy because... Oh, I would lie to people if I wasn't super happy and tell them I'm super happy just interested. because I just didn't... Right. Because they'll slide in your DMs. Absolutely. They, yeah. Right. No, my husband's the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. And then I would go home and be miserable. But at least, <laughs> at least I set a boundary yeah. so that I can figure out my own stuff and my own time. And no, yeah. all my windows and doors are locked, <laughs> closed and locked. I will take care of myself and I will figure it out. Kelly's house looks like a Jehovah Witness hall. <laughs> it's, it's no all windows. of the blinds. There's two doors right. and they don't have windows. 
a pillow shoved in my chimney. <laughs> Nobody's coming. The carbon monoxide never at know. max. Um, inability to be alone. Codependency. I mean, let's be honest. That's probably, what do you say in the graph? 70%? Yeah. Maybe. Well, 70 is a lot. I would say 50%. Okay. 50% is yeah, the boredom. scared to be alone. I'd say the boredom said about 30%. I was going to say probably. 50% loneliness or codependency. They kind of. And if you combine the two, which is probably the most case, is that fair? You're yes. bored and you can't be alone. Right. Well, and the last one's low self-esteem. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Who doesn't have low self-esteem? Well, they find, well, and it, this is specific because they find their confidence in others appeal to them. Yeah. They're trying to, they're trying right. to touch you where you pee. Right. They find security in that. They, I'll, they put a lot of their self-worth in the opinions of others. Yeah. So if you're in a relationship, and here's, I guess, the holy grail, right? You're in a relationship, starts to get kind of roommate -y. They're not all over you anymore. This guy or this girl is sliding into your DM, showing you a lot of entertainment. You're already not happy. Right. Allegedly. Allegedly. You were happy yesterday, but now that you have this now that you message, have a, a, right? a notification on your phone. Now we're separated. <laughs> you know, we're going through some stuff. We're legally know. separated. Well, not legally because that Oof. costs money. Oof, <laughs> we don't have a we don't have a lawyer yet. Jesus. But there's all sorts of different ways that people overlap or reasons that they overlap. The bottom line is we I think all could admit that it's not healthy. No. Period. No, and sometimes it just happens. There is times sure. where your relationship is shit. Sure. You can't easily get out. No. It's not going to be easy. And most people can't do hard things. Let's just be honest. No. Most humans right. cannot do yeah. hard things. About 97% of people cannot do hard things. Especially when you're relying on communication skills and emotional intelligence. Or where you live. Or where your children are. Or where your dogs mm -hmm. are. Or your lease. Or mm -hmm. just everything about that. Right. When a lot of people overlap... I'm going to say on accident, but there is that situation, right? No. Where it's, they were just a friend. It was something casual. They meet the I was life. trying, I was really trying to handle yes. my business, but damn it. I like them. This feels good. It's and more it natural. Yeah. And, and that's what the websites that I was trying to like collect information from a lot of people were commenting and asking like, but can it ever work out? 100%. Which just made me sad because I'm like, well, that's because you're all either overlapping or engaged with an overlapper. And you know that that's not the best. But like, w will it n sometimes work out? Sure. Clock's right twice a absolutely, day. Absolutely, right. But no, it does. I We've seen it. I have. I've seen it with my I've clients. Absolutely seen it. You know what I mean? They're like, I met somebody that I didn't think and it, they just hit me like, a, and they're, they're happy. Right. But you have to, there's a you're better to way to handle people. it. Can we just tell everybody? Yes. You're allowed to break leave. up with people. Leave. You're allowed to break up. If you're meeting somebody else and engaging or entertaining them, you're going to leave anyway. So right. just pull the plug. You're allowed to break up. Pull you'd plug. want your kid to break up. Absolutely. If your kid wasn't happy, you'd go no. break up with them. Absolutely. If your best friend. What? If your husband starts overlapping with somebody else, would you rather him tell you? Well, okay. Ready? It's not that he did it. It's how he did it. It's not that she did it. It's how she did it. All the time. All You're lying. I know it's not a real situation. You know, it's not ideal. But I have people on my caseload right now who are overlapping or have lately. Every single time they're like, so I met this guy and I know it's not ideal, but it just like it is what it is. And I always say, like, I don't care at all that you're seeing somebody and what you have going on. Because that's the right way. Well, the right way is to have a difficult conversation, well, ideally with both people. When we were first talking about overlapping, I actually, when I brought that to you today, mm -hmm. this actually wasn't even what I was referring to. Really? No. Did you read the website? No. Oh. No. I was just looking for something to yeah, give you sure, some references. Right, yeah. That's but a doozy. Have mine that. was more of what you do while you're single. Mm. All the things you do when you're single. And you justify because you are single and you have a lot so you of don't loose ends. Oh, anybody, anything. <laughs> so, yeah. It literally was what happens with those un, mm. those wild little things you have like this, mm -hmm. all these little single yeah. relationships. Yeah, you brought that you up have. last time. You, yes. 
that's more what I was actually referring to. Oh. This is this is actually more when you're in a relationship. Yeah, when but you're my, trying to end a relationship. But to me, it's not any different either. If you're mm-hmm. engaging with a ton of people and you're like, well, I'm single. Sure. Okay, well, if you're not single anymore, then why are you engaging with these people still? Why are they still mm-hmm. in, you, in your inbox? Mm-hmm. Why are they still snapping oh, you? Because they're all, they're all up in the air. Oh, so it's the same kind of thing. Yeah. So I, I explained it the other day that it's like having a good credit score. Mm. So if you have a good credit score, mm-hmm. you keep a good credit score. If you decide you don't want to rent anymore mm-hmm. and you want to buy, mm-hmm. you can get it. Yeah. Well, to me, it's like a heart credit score. Mm. So the better your heart credit score is, the better you have a chance of succeeding because you're leaving less things Open, to throw, right. you know, rocks into your motor. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's, no, I like that analogy. Does that make sense? Yeah, right. So what you do while you're single, we justify really bad behavior. Yeah. But that overlap into your new healthy relationship mm-hmm. can be detrimental. Mm-hmm. And you could be sitting there going, I haven't talked to that girl. I haven't sure. done anything. But it's going to make your new person feel some sort of way. Yeah. Yeah. We can talk about that next time for sure. Yeah, but that's the kind of actually part of the overlapping Mm -hmm. I was talking Mm -hmm. about too because like that, you know, Mm -hmm. that's a hard one. Yeah. You know, so that's hard for a lot of people. And that's people pleaser. So going back through those. Yeah. The Let's reasons for it. Reasons for. So that people can reasons go back. Reasons for overlapping. Fear of commitment. Fear of loneliness. Right. Or boredom. Right. With that like roommate stage that we've talked about before. Yeah. An addiction to love or the spark. Yeah. Is another reason why people tend to outsource their attention. <laughs> outsource. <laughs> Just bringing in the contract out yeah, there. Needs. <laughs> right. Um, guilt of having a bad reason for wanting to leave in the first place, but then justifying it as like, see, this person is better fit. I knew you weren't the right person. So I, they needed like that justification. Um, inability to be alone or codependency type behavior. And then the last one is low self-esteem or needing needing another for their confidence, security, or self-worth. These are all very dangerous mm-hmm. things. These are all kind of shitty things in a non-overlapping I relationship. Know, I know. These are shitty these things are, at a job. These are things that people come to me for in individual therapy. Plug here. But <laughs> other ways that this type of person or a person with these type of issues also tends to engage in ghosting yeah. where they can't just set a firm boundary and say, I'm not interested. It's hard for people to do that. It's very it's hard, hard to break for people up with to people. do that. I know. It's some people are really bizarre. good at it. Most people are not. So bizarre. I help so many people like construct text messages that are like bullet points for a phone call that I'm like, wow. these are the thing. This is where we are. This is how we got here. This is what I want. Right. Like that's assertive communication. Yeah. I'm not interested because of X, Y, Z. I don't want to see you anymore. How do people feel about breakups through text? Oh, I feel like we live in a new world now where like he did it through text. Nah, I hear that less text. and less now. Good. Yeah. Less and less We're because it is what that. it is. And it's yeah. it gives the person the opportunity to say what they want to say without the rebuttal, which is I understand kind of shitty, but that's why they did it that way, because they don't want to hear your side. Of, yeah. I had a client the other day say their person didn't talk to them when they're in person and they left their house and and sent this whole Immediately text. Started texting. And I was like, what? The? And I go, he goes, that's, he goes, it really upset me. I go, man, yeah. she could do it safely. Yeah. To me, they had things. I like to text. I, I don't, I don't No. No, I'd rather just be quiet. Mm. You know, I, I like, <laughs> I like the opportunity to write things out read and it. edit it yes. and read it. And so often I will write a text and not send it, it's but at least get my, thoughts in a row right it's a safer way to communicate Mm -hmm. okay it's like talking to somebody behind glass yes it is this is what i'm thinking and i want you to read the whole thing before you respond (laughs) well not just that like also what kind of environment do you give them to speak freely Mm. because like honestly like i said until now i've never felt like i've been able to express myself freely without 
being like, oh, so I'm just a horrible girlfriend. Oh, I'm just the worst. I'm sorry. I'm the worst. Okay. Right. So if if they don't have that space to feel safe. And most humans don't. No. Is that fair? Yeah. No, I would agree. Now is the first time that I've really embraced that and let my guard down. Right. And now I would feel comfortable having, it would still cause me anxiety, but I'd be much more inclined. Okay. To have a conversation face to face. So when people do text you that stuff, it's like you can't tell me this in person. It's a memo. Like you, you're not even letting me you text you it right. without being <laughs> Could shitty. Could you see how maybe I thought this wouldn't go well? Right. I'm right, sure yeah. it's gonna. Yeah, it's yeah, wonderful. It'll sting. Right. Especially I can imagine being a girl with a guy, you know, or vice versa. I mean, not sure. not to be a jerk. I'm not a small guy. Right. But girls right. scare me <laughs> when they're mad. <laughs> right. Because right. you just go, yeah. uh, what can uh, what things do I do? elevate quickly? Sure. Yes. Okay. So go back to fair fighting rules if you want to know how to do uh, go through that. So for people on the other end, because I see this a lot too, of like, I met this new guy and he says, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Red flags to look out for, for somebody who might be overlapping, saying that their their marriage is dead, right? My marriage is dead. My boyfriend, you know, there's there's no spark anymore. We haven't, oh my God, we haven't had sex in six months. I don't know why you're sharing that with you literally know anyone. You right. know why. I know. But those are red flags. If right. you have somebody who you're kind of entertaining and they're saying that we're separated, I would I would ask for like legal documentation. <laughs> like are you that se- you'd be shocked, maybe not, how many people are like, oh yeah, we we still live together, but we're separated and my room's down in the basement. Like they, come on. Listen. Come on, guys. Listen. I've had people tell me they're like, you know, they're they're not together, but they still live together because of the kids or the. I go listen. That's fine. Nesting. Then just tell him. Right. Just tell him, or it's usually him. Mm-hmm. Not oh. being a jerk. It's usually <laughs> him. Tell him when you can spend the night at my house, or I can spend the night at your house yeah. without any mm-hmm. issue. Mm-hmm. Call Hit me. me up. You right. seem nice. Yeah, sure. You I'm seem very dope. interested. Right. But I. This is not messy. okay. Look, right. I can spend the night. They can spend the night. There's no issue. Like, nope. I'm not worried about somebody blowing down on my house. I'm not no. worried about somebody blowing down at their right. house. I don't care. If no. I can't freely get up in the middle of the night and go pee and come back in because I have to, like, or just drive sneak. to their right. house. Yeah. I know. Right. So if they're saying they're separated, saying the relationship's dead, if they call their former partner toxic, but we're on a break or like, I mean, these are all, there I are weird like. things where I've known people that like, if I leave my house, I lose my house. Mm. Cause it's abandonment. And there's, there are some things that sure. go, Hey, right. yeah, we can talk a little bit, but guess what? There's going to be a oh reasonable God, time limit. Like, with come this. on guys. I mean, the bottom line is I can't leave my house because she's going to say that I am banned in the house. That means you're actively getting divorced. Yes, that's real. You got three or four months and then you're going to court. Or you're like that means it. you're you are in, yes. right. You you're are in it. This. Chances are they shouldn't be dating anyway. And I know that's a bold statement. Yeah, there's some, but you're getting into a mess. You're getting into a mess. No, they've, they've no been together that. forever. Sure, like if you're an older couple and they've been together forever. Yeah. And it's been like, dude, this has been dead for a long time. We don't even talk. We don't do anything together. That's a buzzword. Mm. I would argue, I hear what you're saying and I've, I've, seen that play out where they everybody is being honest but if you guys are still living together and the relationship is dead and blah 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 it's not really dead what it's not or else you'd be divorced well it's not. something is unfinished anything that's unfinished by definition is overlapping, is overlapping. tie you up your loose ends and then you're allowed and to say hey you out. seem dope yeah, right, sure you seem cool sure i like Why you, are you looking at it Looking for it. These people are on dating apps looking for oh, it. Oh, shit. Looking for it. There's a difference between seeing somebody out in real life. Right. Hitting it off and being like, ooh, I, you do seem cool. I have a lot going on. I don't know how to navigate that. Like, that. that's messy, but yeah. unintentional. Versus people being on dating sites, looking, prowling. That's different. While they're living in their girlfriend's basement. Sorry. Stop it. <laughs> That's a little different. Right. right. That's a lot different. I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't think about that aspect yeah. of it. So how to help, and then we can kind of wrap up. But yeah. if you if you are curious about overlapping, or if you're second guessing after this episode, ooh, I think I might be overlapping. You are. <laughs> you are. <laughs> you are overlapping. If you're second guessing if you're overlapping or not, you are 100 <laughs> percent. 
<laughs> ten times looks out like of an overlapper okay. smells like an overlapper. It's either black or white. So if you're not black or white and you're gray, you're overlapping. That's it. Literally, that's what that is. <laughs> Absolutely. So how to help to prevent overlapping is taking a time commitment. And I have talked to clients about this, which is always hard because it seems rigid. But you have to tie up loose ends. You take three months, 30 days, three hours. I don't care. And that's what you said. Like, if it's done, it's done. We can get into rebounding maybe another episode. But as long as you tie tie it up. We love calling it rebounding. Mm -hmm. But guess what? You're telling me you don't have any more half kind of okay relationships after that rebound? Oh, yeah. Okay. So why yeah, don't sure, we call right. those rebounds? How many rebounds do you get? Oh. Okay. Well, what I'm saying right, is. Yeah. But is a rebound by definition just the next one? Do you think people say they're just, you're using you as a rebound? And it's like, well. Or, or just I'm just angry? the next one. That's you the, are just, just the, next, the one. next one. Listen, that's how life is. Right. You're always. the next one. You're just the next one. Everyone's the next one. What do you fucking mean? <laughs> right. You weren't betrothed at birth. The, the fuck are you talking one. about? Right. You are the fucking next one. Right. It's not special. No. It's when only there's special. always the next one. It's only special when you have trust and truly, and I don't mean trust like, oh, I can trust you're not going to. No, no, no. Trust that you can express yourself without being abused Mm -hmm. without being you know all the fancy words you guys like to you know (laughs) throw out i don't even want to say them because i'm so sick of hearing them (laughs) so like that you are the next one listen you're always just my stepmom just passed away eight weeks ago Mm. my dad is 79 years old do you think he had he was thinking about the next one there could possibly be. No, I hope. I'm not I saying. Hope. I mean, for his sake. I, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I don't know for her sake. I don't know. Yeah, We're right. still in. I want everybody to just be happy all yes. of the time. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, like, do you healthy. think he was like, he honored her. He yeah. took care of her. There's the next one. So stop Whoever thinking like. Whoever it would be would be the next oh, one. Oh, you're just the next <laughs> one. Yeah, no shit. Right. What do you so want me to do? Literally everybody. Break right. up at 22 and just die? Like, no, nah, I'm done. You're done. Old I can't Spencer. Rebound. Old Spencer. <laughs> just nah, got a bunch of cats. No. Life's well, good. that's the thing. No matter when it is, a lot of people like to label the next one as the rebound, whether it's six hours later, six weeks later, six years later. They're always it, the next one. Oh, they're the rebound. No, they're not. It's been six months. It doesn't well, they, matter. They must have been real. Well, there's the flip side. They must have been really sad. I don't know if they're ready. <laughs> so, Maybe taking just... a time commitment is helpful. Set it. Set a timeline for Reasonable. yourself. Commit to healing and finding yourself. And I'm gonna. I want to use the word rebound, but that obviously doesn't feel right. But like, engage in your hobbies. Engage. In yeah. your work. Because it's reflect. all going to go out the window when yeah, you start dating I know, someone. Because everybody's so quick to just pitch it anyway. <laughs> right. And sometimes that's the reason that they start overlapping in the first place is because they're bored and you they lost what? themselves. I just have a great idea for people that are recently single. Hmm. Just go volunteer. Do what other people need you to do because that's what you're going to do as soon as you start dating someone. <laughs> just be in that just rhythm. Get used to it. You right. know, life of service. Just do that because mm-hmm. don't live for yourself because that's what you're going to do right. when you go yeah. to a relationship is just eat shit you know you don't get to do what you want to do but that that spark is being able to be you being yes. able to do the and things how you do you do. know how you're gonna who you need to compliment you or enhance you or yin and yang right like unless you figure out who you are now do you think because most people started dating before they're fully functioned as an adult mm. Mm-hmm. And they never were really given a choice to be themselves because their parents never allowed them to be. Yes. That they just carried on that kind of behavior yes. as a dating adult and it's never been broken. Correct. And, and you that's have why... little little blips of beautiful, right? Mm-hmm. Little blips of good. That's why the divorce rate is super high for people in their 20s or early 30s is because they've never been themselves. They have no idea who they are. They've developed further. Their partner has developed further and now they're looking at their partner going. They've never been able to express themselves freely because no one would ever no, listen to them. Right. When three years ago, five years ago, seven years ago, they felt very different than they do now. Now they're independent thinkers or more so because more so they're adults. They're getting there. Right. They have so enough independence like, oh, financially. Right. Or, or like I don't know that I like this. Right. They grow a little little hair on their chin. They can mm-hmm. get after it a little bit. Right. Yeah, they can verbalize it. Yeah. And they probably have people in their DMs who think that they're fantastic. 
<laughs> the last one is leaning on your own support system. A lot of people are afraid to be alone, right? They're afraid of commitment. They're yeah. feeling insecure. You don't need a new partner to make you feel better about yourself. That's I hope you a, have a siblings, slope, right? friends, family. Help have them fill your void. <laughs> if you only feel good when you're with someone, are you really a whole person? Should you be engaging in dating? So listen, I had this conversation with a couple clients over the last couple months. And because of podcasts like this or TV shows or, you know, insert media platform, yeah. they're like, I don't know if I'm a whole happy person who wants a partner or if I need a partner because I'm not a whole healthy person. And they're like spinning. And I'm like, listen, that's a real question. <laughs> listen, you know how you could figure that out? Run the tape. Like there's nothing. There is no magical answer that I have as a clinician to say, well, you are a healthy person or you're not. I don't, I don't know either. You have, it's trial and error. Some of this, you just gotta like, I'm healthy live your most life. of the time. Right. <laughs> and then there's times I'm right. really unhealthy. Can you be a happy, healthy person without other people? Like some people are just extroverted and people, people. Ready? I would not be super happy or healthy if I had nobody in my life. Do you want to share your life or share your burden? I know. There's a, there's I know. a good question, right? That'll let you know real quick. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do this by myself. Well, that's sharing your burden. Absolutely. That's sharing your burden. Right. Me and I would like somebody to travel with. Like, I love going that's hiking. That's sharing your life. It sure right. is cool to do it holding somebody's hand. Absolutely. Okay. That's yeah. sharing your life. That means you you just want to, sh yeah, to share your experience. That feels a lot better than I need help. When I lay in bed at night, <laughs> I'm miserable and nobody wants to talk to me. <laughs> there's plenty. There's too many people to want to talk to you. Just not the mm. people you probably want to talk to you. Or the people who you should talk to. Yeah. You have a whole inbox full of people who are going to co-sign your bullshit. Yeah. Well, they don't really care. No. They just want you to come, come over and spend the night at their Most people baby mama's house. That, right? <laughs> just come through the back door and come down to the base. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? I have to come to your house. All the time. If you always have to come to my house, we got a problem. Listen, I started telling the women on my caseload that they couldn't tell me anymore. They couldn't mention the L word. No love. You can't say that until you've seen his bathroom trash can. Yeah. The inside of his refrigerator and what he sleeps in at night. Yeah. If you can't answer those things, those are interpersonal. Like we shared a space for two hour things because yeah, they started feeling like, well, I, I know, his, right, I know <laughs> that his name is this and I know that his mom's name is this. And I know, you know, we've been talking for three months and I think I love him. And I'm like, no, no, no. No, no. You love the thought of him. You Have could love you a seen lot of the things. inside of his refrigerator? You could love things about him. <laughs> sure. That's different. Could you live with him? Compatibility at some point needs Matters. to come in. Right. Are you neat? Well, right. if you're not neat, I mean, like, whatever you're into. Sure. Right. If he has expired condiments, is that a deal breaker? And some, some of my clients are like, eh. I mean, if it's like. Dijon mustard that nobody uses all of the yeah. time and it expired, that's different than like... Yeah, you buy mustard twice sure, a year right. for I'm like, right. beautiful days. If he had liquid sitting in the bottom of his produce bin, is that a red flag? Is that a deal breaker? And some of them are like, well, how long has it been there? I'm like, right, that's why you need to see the inside of his refrigerator. Things matter. Same with men. I've asked men, have you ever heard your girlfriend on the phone with her mother? And they're like, no. And I'm like, you need to overhear that conversation. <laughs> That's a very good point. How so she talks a, to people. I, mm -hmm. I literally just did a flash in my head of the women I've been with and good versus evil. Right. <laughs> Jesus. You, you need oh to hear God. those things. And you don't know those things unless you spend a lot of time with somebody in a lot of different facets. Oof. It matters. It matters. All right. We so if you want to overlap, <laughs> don't. So check us out on all the socials. Um, you can find us on TikTok. You can find us on Instagram. You can mm -hmm. find us on Facebook. You can find us on YouTube. Um, if you're overlapping, work on it. It's a bad thing to do. You wouldn't appreciate it done to you. You wouldn't appreciate it done to you, someone you love. No. So you have to be conscious of that or you will fail. I'm just being honest. I you're know. probably going to fail anyways, but I you're going to fail and I feel know. bad about it. And here's the other thing. 
people will stay with people a long time because they don't want to hurt their feelings and they don't, but they hurt them more by dragging it on. Absolutely. They hurt them more by doing all this dumb shit. Sure. You're allowed to enjoy your life, but the more disciplined you are, the more you will enjoy your life. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that anything through discipline will actually enrich your life more than any person, anything, because that discipline, I mean, truthfully, my grandson just killed his fourth deer. He's nine years old. (laughs) I just saw the video. He such a little bad. Right. Right. But he was disciplined. Even when he was, after he had shot that deer, he was still so quiet in this video. Just case, right? Yeah. Right. Because he's so used to being Mm -hmm. disciplined and Mm -hmm. he's nine. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is that discipline that allows you to have a good relationship with yourself. Yeah. With your parents, with your children, with your friends and family. And then if you can do that Mm -hmm. with people that are supposed to love you, no matter what. (laughs) Right. If you're not good at that, what makes you think you're going to find voluntarily engaged? (laughs) You're going to find a stranger. (laughs) Right. That isn't internally indebted to you like a family member's taught. Okay. Unhealthy. But what makes you think that that's going to work out easily? Yeah. I mean, like, honestly, if you don't have a good relationship with your own people, Mm -hmm. who are you engaging with? No. And I feel like overlap, honestly, like what you're saying, because it's a consequence often, like the default of not being disciplined or having the right communication skills or setting firm boundaries, right? Like it, a lot of people, I would say, I don't want to put a number on it. Never mind. A lot of people do this by default. This wasn't their intention. No. They didn't it's go from out being seeking. Undisciplined. I've right. been there. Yeah. You've been there. Absolutely. This isn't like something we've never done. Right. Yeah. I mean, are you kidding me? <laughs> right. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> right. Okay. But that discipline in that. Right. Is very important that you understand that. Like, if you can do that, you're unstoppable. Yeah. And you're okay with your own feelings. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be easy, but this isn't easy either. No. Because you have way more well, people is, on your payroll. Hard. This is hard, guys. That's a lot more people on your payroll. Nobody does this well. <laughs> For no good reason. Right. You know, you could juggle a lot of people. But here's the other thing. If you like engaging with multiple people. There's a word for that. Be in that kind of relationship. <laughs> right. Yes. But that takes discipline, too, because you have yes. to explain to people like, look, I'm polyamorous. This right. is what I want to do. And then you so have which to one communicate is it? still. But I guarantee if those people found out that their mates were overlapping, they would not be happy. No, probably not. At all. No. And actually, that's, I guess, not always true. I think their feelings would get hurt. But you know how many people I've had on my caseload that are like, I wish he would just cheat on me. Because they wouldn't have to make a decision. I wish. Yeah. I wish he would just I leave. Or I wish he time. would just, <laughs> I wish she would just find somebody else to take her crazy ass. I asked right? my <laughs> client, I go, what would you do if your husband was cheating? Because he's they're they're in a rough yeah, patch, you right. know. And she's like, I would be ecstatic. <laughs> and I was like, What the fuck is that? Because it makes it easy. Do you know how many people just want an out? How many people I have had say, like, I wish she would cheat on me. I wish she would hit me. Oh I wish, God. you know, like, I wish that it would, like, like does that go into the kink thing? Or is that a no, different thing? it's just they're just looking for a final straw. And I tell people all the time, I'm like. If you break up over a straw, you will then have a conversation once emotions have settled and the straw doesn't really straw. matter. It's no, a it's just a Tuesday. <laughs> it's not a straw. Or a miscommunication. Yes. So you need to. I mean, obviously hitting someone or sure. cheating on right. someone yeah. is not right. a miscommunication. It's a little bit of a bigger straw. Kind but of. still, but people can still put that behind them. They can. But if your actions are, are leading somebody to actually react a certain way as well. What do you expect? Usually not unintentional. Yeah. We they all they all know what it is. They just don't want all to right. talk about it. We're gonna wrap this up. So okay. everybody be good to each other. I will say this as a parent, teach your kids to be able to communicate with you very easily and be honest with themselves and like be able to speak to you freely. And I can guarantee your kids will have better relationships with their mates. Because if they're given that venue to express themselves honestly and openly, they will have such more success talking to their mates because they'll go, no, this is what we do in our home. Mm -hmm. This is how we do it. We talk about it. Right. We talk about hard things. Most of this is really rooted in not being able to communicate Mm -hmm. or or finalize anything or have Mm -hmm. a voice. Right. 
So we we chalk it up as people being horrible people, but honestly, it really stems back from it's all learned. freedom all of, this is learned. of yeah. being able to express yourself yeah. without judgment, without being angry, like actually mm-hmm. be able to hash it out. Right. And advocate for yourself and for your needs. No, But if you can't do that with your parent, what makes you think you can do it with your mate? Right. So when you guys are all mad at your mate or mad at yourself, realize what you're doing to your children. Because you're creating the next generation of people that can't function and do good Mm -hmm. through this. Mm -hmm. So send us your thoughts. Shoot us on anything. All the social medias. You guys know how to do this shit. It's 2024. I don't have to walk you through it. Like, oh, <laughs> click here. Like, you're not dumb. Listen, if you can slide Find into us. somebody's DMs, you can slide into <laughs> ours. Have a great day. Bye.